Do not go to bed until you have gone over the day three times in your mind. What wrong did I do? What good did I accomplish? What did I forget to do? It is important to reflect on your day before going to bed. You should go over the day three times in your mind, thinking about what you did wrong, what you did well, and what you forgot to do. This will help you learn from your mistakes, build on your successes, and make sure that you don't forget anything important. This will help you to identify any wrong that you may have done. It is also a good opportunity to learn from your mistakes. By taking the time to reflect on your day, you will be able to improve your behavior and make better choices in the future. You should think about what good you accomplished and what could have been done better. This will help you to learn from your mistakes and to improve your performance the next day. It is also a good way to wind down before going to sleep. This allows you to process what happened and to ensure that you have not forgotten anything important. Simply review the events of the day in your mind three times before going to sleep. If you find that you have forgotten something, make a note of it and take care of it the next day. This habit will help you to keep on top of your responsibilities and avoid forgetting anything important. The soul of man is divided into three parts, intelligence, reason, and passion. Intelligence and passion are possessed by other animals, but reason by man alone. It is often said that the soul of man is divided into three parts, intelligence, reason, and passion. While it is true that other animals possess intelligence and passion, only man possesses reason. This ability to reason is what sets us apart from the rest of the animal kingdom and is what makes us truly human. The reason is the faculty of the soul that allows us to think logically and make decisions based on our ability to see the consequences of our actions. It is what allows us to think abstractly and understand concepts that are not immediately apparent. Passion, on the other hand, is the emotional or instinctual side of our nature. It is what drives us to act on our desires and emotions. No one is free who has not obtained the empire of himself. No man is free who cannot command himself. In today's society, it is easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of everyday life and forget about the importance of taking care of oneself. However, as the quote above reminds us, no one is truly free unless they have mastered the art of self-control. Only when we are in control of ourselves can we be truly free to live our lives the way we want to. This means learning to control our thoughts, emotions, and actions, instead of letting them control us. It is not an easy task, but it is essential to living a happy and fulfilling life. Lust weakens both body and mind. Lust is a powerful emotion that can consume both body and mind. When we are lustful, we are driven by our desires and can lose sight of what is important. Our judgment is clouded and we can make poor decisions. Lust can also lead to physical weakness. It can drain our energy and make us less able to resist temptation. In the end, weakens both body and mind. If you have a wounded heart, touch it as little as you would an injured eye. There are only two remedies for the suffering of the soul, hope and patience. Hope is the light that guides us through the darkness, and patience is the calm that comes after the storm. These are the two things that we must cling to when our hearts are broken. It is only necessary to make war with five things, with the maladies of the body, the ignorances of the mind, with the passions of the body, with the seditions of the city and the discords of families. Each of these can be conquered with the right strategy and tactics. The illnesses of the body can be eliminated with the help of medicine and surgery. The ignorance of the mind can be conquered with education and knowledge. The passions of the body can be conquered with the help of willpower and self-control. The discords of families can be conquered with the help of love and understanding. The oldest, shortest words, yes and no, are those which require the most thought. There's a lot of truth to the saying that the oldest and shortest words in the English language are the ones that require the most thought. When you're presented with a simple yes or no question, it can be surprisingly difficult to come up with an answer. That's because you have to weigh all of the potential implications of each option before making a decision. In some cases, a single word can change the entire course of your life, so it's no wonder that we often take our time to mull over our response to such questions. The next time you're presented with a yes or no question, take a moment to think about it before giving your answer. You might be surprised at the wisdom that comes from taking a little extra time to consider your options.